I was talking to Chris and he just slapped me. Trudy had some kind of oil leaking. Oh my God. They're going to try and diagnose her and see what's happening. This is a very nerve wracking experience. Seems crazy to turn around now. No, you'd, you'd be screwed. We're Marion and Chris. In 2018, we quit the nine to five and bought Trudy, our camper van. We are currently on an adventure to drive the circumference of the world. At the end of the last episode, we realized that Trudy had some kind of oil leaking. So this morning, we're just gonna assess the damage. Yeah, you can see there's, there's patches under there where it's been dripping. We're spraying mosquito stuff already. I was talking to Chris and he just slapped me. And I was like, what are you doing? And then he showed me his hand, there's blood. So I think we're, we're only, and this is lucky really, we're eight miles from the nearest town of Whitehorse. We could have been in Prudhoe Bay or in the middle of nowhere this and this happened. Say, this is when we say our guardian angel were with us. And I think they really are. So although it's happened, it could be so much worse. So I think the first thing we need to do is check the oil just to make sure that we're not going to damage Trudy driving her back into town. And then we're going to go find a garage. The hood. See, I'm sounding American now. Pop the hood. Ugh. It's about the same. Okay. So let's go. These little buggers are literally Everywhere. savage. And they've got an obsession with my face and my bingo wings. Oh my God. We nearly drove off with the chucks in. Okay, well Trudy starts, but she's not very good with the chucks under the wheels. <laughs> she's not going anywhere. I've got to brace the mosquitoes again. I'm in. You're in. There's a little tent there. We met these guys last night. A, a couple. What? A squeak. A squeak. That's why we're going to a garage. Yeah, we met those guys last night. They're sleeping. They're hiking. They're in a tent. Absolutely lunatics with Toby these mosquitoes. And Tony. <laughs> Toby and Tony, if you watch this, uh, we saw your pain last night going like this, but we looked after their food for them so they didn't get done by bears as well as mosquitoes. Um, That's a very good idea, actually. That's a very good tip. If you're hiking and you see someone in a van, just say, can you look after my food? My food, my bear barrel won't take all this food. Although we're up early this morning, so we've just woken them up, but hey ho. Sorry. <laughs> So yeah, we're off into town. One of the uh, one of the big worries, obviously having a Fiat in Canada and America is that you can't get spare parts. So we're hoping it's a connection and nothing major. If it's something major, we could be in Whitehorse for the next few months waiting for a part. And that could be the end of the Alaska trip. But we'll see, we're, we're positive. Well, well, no point in worrying about it until we've spoken to a garage. So we're going back into town. Yeah, we need a we need a car doctor. There's the garage Integra tire. We went there yesterday to uh, top up with water. Auto car centre. It says in front. There's a mechanical office just. There. Okay, let's go into the mechanical office and see what they say. Integral tires, help yeah. us. Last night before we went to bed, we put the chocks in our camper and we noticed there's some leaks on the floor and obviously because of the situation and where we are, we just wanted somebody to have a look if possible to tell us, oh my god, your van's going to explode. We need help. Yeah, we need a mechanical <laughs> device. It's a small van, it's, it's a, a Fiat Ducato. Yeah, but don't let that put you off it, it's fine. Oh, that would fit in my van perfectly. Power steering, will it? It looks, uh, the steering fluid looks okay, I checked it. But, but yeah, but if you can... We're not mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> so the guys in the store were like, if there's any problems with a Fiat, you got trouble because you can't get the parts. But they're going to look at it and uh, try and assess it. 
Although we did just confuse him with the right-hand drive, I think. I've done the same myself. I've got into a taxi <laughs> and uh, I'm actually in the steering wheel and it's like, what's happening? Yeah, but they're looking at it straight away, which is absolutely amazing. They might even be able to help you rattly muffler, love. Oh, yeah. I'm more than happy to take a look. Yeah, but you don't but know I what honestly, you're going to find. But I honestly can't hear Okay. My mechanic in the UK yeah. is very helpful okay. and will literally, he's given me sheets of how much fluid and how much yeah. stuff. So, so we could always get something so, sent over So we can always we do that. To. If you're willing to work with us and, and, and make it happen, we can we can cut, well, let's bring it, it forward. Yeah, let's see. Hopefully it's, a, it's just a loose, loose bolt. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. She's there going you. in the garage. They're going to try and diagnose her and see what's happening. I Ooh. can't believe the mechanic looks just like our friend Matt. Matt, Julie, he's your, he's your doppelganger. Yeah. <laughs> She's on the ramp. <laughs> Fingers crossed. This is a very nerve wracking experience. I have a lot of faith but I'm still very nervous because obviously that is everything not just our vehicle but our home and we are in the UK and we're jokingly saying yeah well you know it'd be all right but ultimately Actually, it's gonna be a nightmare and I know that some people will go well you're stupid to take a beer anyway but that's that's we don't have an unlimited amount of money that we can just buy any vehicle exactly we have to do with work with what we've got and um, and Trudy Messed, a, I've messaged Ursul and he's pinged already. Ah, oh, Ursul will send us the parts, I'm sure. Well, no, Ursul loves Trudy as much as us. I literally love Ursul. He's messaged me back because obviously he cares about Trudy. If you need any spare parts, um, I will buy them and I will send them with DHL or UPS. As you know, the Fiat is half Turkish, so I can find a spare part of Trudy faster than an Italian. <laughs> I, love I love that. that. I have to add that we actually contacted um, Fiat to say we're about to do this world drive and do they want to be part of it? And you know, hey, we're really cool. You want to come on this journey? And we heard absolutely nothing at all. Come on, Fiat. Come on, Fiat. What kind of company are you? You've got two old people <laughs> on an adventure and you've got our lovely friend Tur um, Ursul in Turkey who like that just wants to help. So there you go, if you don't know Ursul, he was one of our lifesavers. He came to us right from the old days when we were isolating in the car park in Old Town, Istanbul, and has been yeah. the manager of Tread the Globe in Turkey yeah. ever since. He's a rock star. Every single week <laughs> during the first lockdown, as you remember, everybody was like, nobody knew what would happen. He turned up with a box with eggs and milk yeah. and cheese and his phone number and said, if you need anything, call me. If not, I'll be back next week. And he did that. And he has been our friend in Turkey ever since. We love you and Elif, your wife. And we are so grateful for your friendship. Thank you. Okay, she's coming back down. He's popping the hood. How's it looking? Looks like the leaves coming from up top. Looks like... You can't really see exactly where it's coming from. Okay. The liquid on the floor didn't look like dirty oil. It looked like transmission fluid. Oh, transmission fluid. What's transmission fluid? Is that good or bad? I don't know. I don't know what transmission fluid is. He's trying to see where it's coming from. All of the cars up here have these electrical connections. And that's because it gets so cold here in the winter that they have to plug the engine in. It's got a warmer so that it's able to start. I don't want to be here in the winter. Oh, she's going back up. Oh, she's coming back down again. Oh, he's going to turn the... I think it must be something to do with the steering because he's getting him in there to turn the steering to check it. That's better than a leaking oil tank. Do you know, it? there is nothing better in life when you have a mechanical issue rocking up to a garage where somebody says, never worked on a Fiat, but let me have a look, rather than, no, it's a Fiat, can't do it. Yeah, exactly. Can do attitude. Can do attitude is our survival mechanism. If not, we've got Ursa at the end of the phone. <laughs> we've got good news or bad news? Well, it's a little bit of both. Okay. It's a little bit of both. Found where the leak's coming from. Okay, that's good. It isn't really anything major. 
but unfortunately, it's probably something you're going to have to get from the back on. Okay. It's actually brake fluid that's leaking. Oh, or, it's brake fluid. Or your clutch. Oh, for the clutch. Yeah, for your clutch, because it's the flex hose that goes to the slave cylinder that's actually got a bunch of little pinholes in it just from age and wear and tear. And... Okay, so this is Trudy. So if you look up here, this rubber holds. You can see how it gets uh, kind of wet over here. Yeah. Because there's a, a few little perforations in that hose just from age and wear and tear and drying out. And... Okay. And it just, it it's just, just slowly, dripping ever so slowly. It just slowly seeps out. And then when there's enough, it just blows back with the wind. And that's why you get all this mess back oh, here. Okay. So it's probably been doing it for a while and we haven't yeah. noticed. Is it not like a standard hose? Is it a particular No, hose? it's a particular style of hose. Mm -hmm. There's basically, these hoses are actually basically in three, three kind of stages. They're made okay. in three stages so that they actually hold pressure, right? Uh, because so, they're pressurized uh, hoses. Yeah, because it's the same kind of hose that actually works for your brakes. Because it's actually everywhere, stops isn't it? It's literally yeah. Yeah. everywhere. But it's, but it's just from wind swirling around oh, and it okay. takes it everywhere. And it's flicking it out so, and about. Yeah. So we just every day check the, check the oil, yeah. check the brake fluid. Yeah, you should be okay. Other question, we actually have dot five brake fluid in yeah. there. Do you have any spare or is there somewhere I can is get Is there some? like an O'Reilly's yeah. or a Napa? Up. Yeah, Walmart, Canadian Tire. Do they uh, do dot five or do I? Yeah. yeah. Yep. If oh, we yeah. were to smash the windscreen mm -hmm. on this, would do you think it's a standard size or would we be screwed? <laughs> no, you, you'd be screwed. Here's another th question then. The muffler mm -hmm. is a little bit old and it's starting to rattle quite. You probably heard it when yeah. it started up. Do you think that's replaceable here? That's not, somebody couldn't just put a new, a, a new equivalent on, on there, that. If you're able to find like a, like a, a Midas muffler or a Speedy muffler, any muffler, muffler that shop was, or exhaust shop. They should probably say, do it. They can probably make Fine. one to fit. Yeah. We are so lucky. Jerry has reassured us <laughs> that we're going to be okay to drive another day. But and we won't hold you on that, Jerry. We no. won't hold you on that. But he's also <laughs> given us tips as well. Ursel's on it as well. We've also messaged Simon at our garage in the UK to get a part number. And we're just going to have to manage the situation. I suppose this is part of the adventure, really, isn't it? It is. So uh, he said just take loads of uh, brake fluid with you. Keep checking it daily. Keep topping it up and we should be okay to carry on until we get to Vancouver City. So we're gonna carry on. We're so close to Alaska, it seems crazy to turn around now. Yeah. Um, and then we'll base ourselves in Vancouver until that part comes. So we need to go back into town and stock up on brake fluid. Okay. Napa Auto Pass. Let's see if we can get some dot five brake fluid. Andrew, dot five. Okay, so we've jumped back into Trudy and now we're gonna start the drive further west towards uh, Anchorage. We're gonna head up towards Tok. I don't think we'll make it there today because it's an eight hour drive, um, but we'll see how we go. So we just come back to the rest stop. We did say that if the, uh, the couple that were camping were still here, we'd offer them a lift, but they've already gone. So I reckon we'll make a quick coffee and then uh, rock and roll. Ah, we just started driving and these are the guys that we saw yesterday. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's Toby and Tony! <laughs> a bit heavy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot stronger than I look. Welcome to Trudy. <laughs> okay. So we have our first hitchhikers here in the Yukon. Tony and Toby from Germany. <laughs> these are these are the guys that we saw waving the mosquitoes. They're vicious, aren't they? Oh, they are so. <laughs> so we're giving them a lift for about a hundred miles today, and uh, they've been waiting by the side of the road apparently since yesterday. Trudy's coming to the rescue. But it's so nice to meet other adventurous people that get out there and see the world. I think they're more adventurous yeah. being, being in, a, in a tent with bears.
and the good roads didn't last for that long. Every time a car comes past, we cringe. We do. We in case there's a rock coming for the windscreen. Especially after the mechanic told us today we can't get a replacement. I don't know if we've mentioned before, but we actually carry clear tape. Uh, so that if we do get a crack or something, we can try and hold the integrity until we can get it repaired. maybe repaired with that, that specialist really, or until we get to Australia. <laughs> it's a long way away. We've just stopped for a pee and I wanted to say thank you to Canada because your services are phenomenal. Not only do you have a lovely park area that we can stay at, toilets, very clean toilets, but there's also sometimes have these dump station ports as well. And for those of you camping or traveling with too much food to go in your bear barrel, I noticed that at the back of the bins, they've actually got these massive areas oh yeah you can hide your food in that you bag. could hide your food in and there's nowhere a bear will get in there now i know it's not the most hygienic thing and some of you will be freaking out at the health and safety aspects of that but it's just a tip that might work for you if you need it so yeah just next to the uh the rest stop keep your trash clean oh this is a cool look at this old bridge Oh, that. Wow, that's a very fast flowing river, isn't it? Yes, I'm making Chris film flowers again. This is extraordinary to think that these flowers are just wild on the side of the road. They look like they've been planted there in such straight lines from as far as the eye can see. So we're just doing a quick U-turn. We just spotted a bear, so we're gonna see if we can, uh, if we can see it. Very well behaved bear. He's, he played up for the camera, he's right there. I can't believe there's a bear, look, right there. Here you go, pass me the camera. There is the bear, literally as we're going past. Morning, Paddington. We're just driving past the most amazing lake. What's this lake called? Can you remember? Kwane. Kwane lake. lake. It looks like the coast of uh, Turkey or somewhere tropical. It's so blue. So we're arriving at the visitor's centre here by the lake and we're going to drop these guys off. Ta -da! <laughs> We've arrived! Yay! We survived! Okay guys, good luck on your travels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the ride. You're more than welcome. <laughs> and stay safe. Nice to meet you. Bye! <laughs> So that was so nice, those guys. They're hiking for a month uh, from Germany. They flew into Whitehorse. They're hiking the area for a month. Crazy with these mosquitoes, but there you go. They were saying that just five days ago, there were no mosquitoes. They must have just all hatched out. Yeah, they said as soon as it got warm, they literally exploded. So we, uh, we've got another five hours drive and uh, should be hopefully crossing into Alaska later today. It's, uh, it's nearly three o'clock. So we 
we're just coming up to a, uh, a gas station and uh, although we've still got half a tank of gas as we always say fill up while you see it because you never know diesel what you got i got from the yukon oh that's amazing i got the i drove i drove the alaska highway and loved it amazing and i got the i drove the historic alaska highway canada alaska amazing How are you doing, love? I'm doing really well, high concentration. I don't know how motorbikes do this road. It's this loose gravel and... Holes. Holes, big holes. Although I think, I think we were saying that the condition of the road, considering where it is, yeah. with the ice in the winter and everything else, it's in pretty good condition. got about an hour till the uh, Alaskan border it's just starting to look a little bit stormy in the distance there oh that was so nice they're doing what a random American? police uh, police spot check there and sobriety test and he chatted to us and uh, He's going to follow us. We got another subscriber. Uh, he said that there's a bridge up here as you go up the hill. He said as he came here, there was two grizzly bears by the side of the road. So we might get lucky. Okay, here's the bridge coming up. Let's keep our eyes peeled. Well, that's a seriously big river. Look at, that. Look at the size of that. Well, we've made it up the hill and no grizzlies, unfortunately, this time. The weather is just starting to spit. We're sort of going under these rain clouds, but still beautiful views. I mean, look at these wildflowers on the side of the road. Yeah, they're stunning. It's they look like, looks like a border, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks like somebody's planted it out for us. The problem with the rain is you can't actually see the potholes anymore. <laughs> Chris has nicknamed them the van killers. Some of them would swallow Trudy up. really bad ridges where suddenly half of the road is lower than the other half and uh, it's not good for the side of your tyres. Welcome to Beaver Creek. This is the last town in the Yukon baby before we hit Alaska. It's, it's a funny little town look. That's the motel. 24 hour self serve diesel, and then uh, that's it, I think. Oh, there's the local shop. I know that because it says shop on the side of the building. <laughs> welding, they've all got welding. Oh, there's another gas station and a motel. There you go, we're just coming up to the border crossing. So, uh, fingers crossed, we have a smooth one. And uh, we will see you on the other side because we never good to film border crossings. You can get in trouble. See you in America, baby. <laughs> so that's the Canadian part of the border that we've just left. They don't stamp you out. There's no, uh, there's no crossing go on, on this side. And it says that the American one uh, customs is 30 kilometers. So uh, about 15, 18 miles to go. Very beautiful drive driving up to the uh, Alaskan border. 
but uh, quite a few kilometers of gravel bumpy tracks. Well, it's beautiful, isn't it? It is, and because you have to slow down, you actually get to Absolutely. Just before the border crossing, they've got this welcome to Alaska sign. Yes, they do. For a good selfie, we're truly in the background there. <laughs> and then in true sticker style, the whole thing's full of stickers. We did stick one of Trudy on there. Marianne stuck one on there, for those of you with good eyes. But I'm going back in the van because I'm getting eaten alive by bugs. They found me. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we are officially in Northern Alaska. We're in Alaska, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> the, uh, the lady on the customs, the customs officer was absolutely lovely. And we ended up chatting for ages about our adventures and her family and everything. So, so nice. So uh, a very warm welcome here to Alaska. We've still got about an hour and 40 uh, to our destination. And, oh. The clocks have gone back an hour. What time is it now? Five, it's 5.48, which means we're nine hours behind the UK. Oh. My brain, it gets so hard to speak to people. Okay, we're nine hours behind England. I can't believe we've driven that far, that's mental. I love these people that do all these adventurous, crazy trips. Oh, like us. <laughs> Never thought of myself as crazy before. Uh, storm's following us, it's over there. We're right on the edge of it. Might be a bit stormy tonight, my sweet. The light is nuts. We're just coming into the town of Tok and then we'll find something to eat and somewhere to park up for the night, I think. Because it's uh, our destination and it's eight o'clock, which is nine o'clock our time because the clocks went back. So there we are, fast Eddie's restaurant. There's I'm loads of other vehicles parked up here. So we're gonna park up here for the night. We're in Alaska, baby. We've done it, baby. It's been a good day. A long day we made it to alaska and we're going to finish the episode here we hope that you enjoyed this episode we will see you next time after a long needed rest bye for now <laughs>